message passing schedules. passing schedules, but usually it doesn't matter too much. Uh, basically what you do is you set up an iterative decoding procedure like, like follows. What I mean by message passing schedule is in what order do you start the procedure, what order should you pass messages, and how do you know when to stop. So what we have is an iterative decoding procedure. Initially, what we do is we get the channel observation Y and calculate LC for all uh, for all the uh, for all the channel observations. In other words, get all the YIs and calculate all the all the LCs. All other messages are initially zero. Except the LCs, everything else is zero. So uh, that reflects the fact that uh, when a log likelihood ratio is zero, you have no preference between zero and one, or you don't have any information to distinguish between zero and one. So that makes sense. Then what we will do is um, execute um, the sum product algorithm at each variable. practice the initial messages, since the initial messages are all zero coming in from the rest of the graph, uh, and the rule is take the sum, the first message you pass here will just be LC, and these are all zero, so zero plus LC is LC. At future iterations, um, these will have some value, and so therefore you'll be adding these to LC. Now it's important to notice that since there are DV edges, uh, that, that connect back to checks, and um, and it's also true that these DV messages, uh, excuse me, the um, the DV destinations, their mess, their their um, the messages to them have to be calculated in different ways. In other words, um, so if this is the destination, we take the sum of all these inbound messages. If this is the destination, we take the sum over all of these messages and exclude that one, and so on. Then dv different calculations need to happen, happening to calculate all of the outbound messages. Uh, excuse me, what do you mean by attached checks? So, what's the check? In this graph, each variable is attached to dv checks. So if I go back to the factory graph, there are dv checks attached, in other words, con uh, connected by edges. The mu functions, you mean? No, I mean, the, I mean in the graph. The, an edge connects a variable and a check. So you remember the factory graph representation? Mm -hmm. have the variables on top and the checks on the bottom, and an edge connects variables and checks. Oh, you mean the factor boxes? Yes. They are called checks. Okay. Sorry, I should have made that clear. Uh, these are I call these parity checks. Yeah. I, okay. No, no, I, no. Yeah. So I've shortened that to checks. Then I execute the sum. Product. 
product algorithm. each parity check pass messages to all attached variables. Procedure is just keep going, calculate all the variables, pass messages to all the checks, and back and forth and back and forth until a stopping condition is reached. What um, what do you think should be the stopping condition? Is there any way we can check to see if we have a valid code word? A yeah, fixed point, maybe. Um, a fixed point, yes. The uh, sum product algorithm is known to have fixed points. Um, so that the, the speed uh, difference equation or the derivative group, whichever measure you take, is getting closer to zero. Yes. So you stop there. That is a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good suggestion. Um, some algorithms work that way. Um, however, it is possible to check whether you have a valid code word. How would we do that? So we can just look at all the checks. If, if the checks are all satisfied, uh, in other words, if, if um, at the variables I have a log likelihood ratio, what I can do is I can, I can then say the log likelihood ratio, if it's positive, that's telling me that this is zero. And if it's negative, that's telling me that this is one. So I can make decisions on all the variables, and then I can see if those decisions satisfy all the checks. If the checks are all satisfied, then I have a valid code word. Um, so uh, the stopping condition should be stop if Secondly, I like that about the fixed point. Let's, so let's put that in fixed point. In other words, the messages aren't changing very much, or the, the, the messages uh, seem to be approaching some constant value. That is, uh, that's actually guaranteed to eventually happen, but it could take an extremely long time. So because it could take an extremely long time, uh, we'll put in a third one, maximum number of iterations reached. <coughs> so an iteration, I call this an iteration. So each time I go back to start, that's one iteration. Uh, maximum number of iterations depends on the application, but anything from 10 to 1,000 is typical. So, um, it turns out, and I don't think this has ever been proven because I think it would be extremely hard to prove, but I don't think any counterexample has ever been found. If you stop with a valid code word, then that code word was what was sent. 